seven, eight, nine. Yes, Happy Thursday, everybody. Welcome to Around the Way Curls. Another episode. Another one. Hello. Hip, hip, cheerio. Hey, girl. How you feeling? I'm, I'm wonderful. I'm wonderful. Tell me about yourself. I'd like to also oh. switch off on the who goes first. It's Thursday. Wow. Who goes first? It's a break the wheel. Well, I've been keeping up with Dr. Huberman. <laughs> I've been getting up early. I have Good even been going for a walk around the block for a half hour, letting the sunlight into my eyes, getting that, what is it called? Not sciatica. Hey. Oh. What's the thing? My circadian, what is it? Circadian? My circadian rhythm in order. And so you're getting was, sleepy at night? Are you going to bed? Yeah, early? I have been. Absolutely. Around like 11, 1130. I've been like, oh. You don't get no text from you around 1 o'clock, 1230 now. You might. Because because this is the day when we record, I'm, I'm completely off. I have not worked out. Um, and today, in all honesty, my stomach hurt last night. So I did go to sleep. But then I woke up and I slept in and I didn't go for my walk. So I'm a little oh, wired, as you can see. But the routine, I, we're still implementing. I will say um, I'm really, really... Re- just honing in on the importance of stretching. I have a yoga wheel and the way if you y'all, if just get a yoga wheel, if you can, it is working miracles on my lower back. You know that I've been stretching my lower back for many a reason. And this yoga wheel is like, if you Google stretches to do with the yoga wheel, you can stretch your, arms you can stretch your sides you can really get into that back it's just amazing and i feel different in my body i feel great i have a yoga class lined up i love this yes so i'm really enjoying it i will say i took it a little too goddamn far with dr huberman and tried an ice bath what do you mean like did you go to the (laughs) corner store and buy multiple bags yes because you you are not well you are crazy. I'm taking it seriously. Not you know one me. time as you were hauling those bags up <laughs> and pouring them into your bath, did you think, wow, I really don't need to do this? No, not once. And that is because I took a walk oh, that day and I was like activated in a different kind of way. I was like with all of the healing shits. And I said, okay, I graduated from the cold shower. Watch me work. Too far, too fast. How long girl, are you sitting in that bath? What happened? Talk about it. You got butt girl, ass naked so, and sat with some ice no, on you? No, I put my hand in and was like, absolutely not. And then proceeded to walk away and get angry at how cold it was. And then was like, waited for the ice to melt. I was like, all right, well, I'm going to wait. And so it gets a little warmer before I reach my hand back in there to because I have a stopper. In my tub, and it was colder. And I was like, you know what? I'm Does it have melted it, girl? She said right. it was colder. <laughs> when I tell you, this one arm was pissed. That's all the went in that. <laughs> I was like, you know what? I'm going to try to make these nuts. Listen, and I was watching, you know, Kevin Hart sits in ice. He has a show where he sits in ice with athletes on YouTube. Oh, for real? And talks. Yeah, yeah. Alan Iverson in there and everything. That, you're not a real fan. That's what I'm talking about. But anyway, he does it, and it's so good for you. Dr. Huberman has a two-hour and 30-minute podcast all on the benefits of getting taking cold ice baths. And I'm like, I have to get over this. I have to do this. How long are you sitting in the ice bath? I didn't get in the ice bath. Did but how ever... long are you trying? Like, what's the goal? Because the other drone was like a couple minutes. Is this like a 30 minute? Th- are you like reading a book? Or is it 20 Maybe seconds? I was going to try for like five minutes. I was really going to just be like, okay, like your mind is stronger. Than- and you know, I don't have ice readily available to me. So I had to walk a distance. It was annoying. I was irritated. 
Like I, I literally took my cart, my grandma cart, out of the house and carted I can, five I'm bags of ice. Process and then taking it upstairs and took then it upstairs, pouring it into your bag. And well, first the shit, out the and then put one arm into it and then walked away <laughs> in the visual. Like, why aren't you recording your daily? You need to record. Because <laughs> not everything is content, damn it. Let me live my life. Listen, that is I, content worth paying for. Well, y'all, if, if you got any tips on how to get your ass in, I get, you just got to do it. You just got to get in. You have to do it. Yeah. You can't it's think like about I, it. It's that 10 yards. It's the football. It's 10 yards. You, Mm -hmm. you know, I got, that was, that was down one. That was first down. I got to try second down because that was a complete failure. No yards gained. Second down, we're going to get at least five yards. All right. Third down, we're, we're, we're going to get the first down. It's fine. I wish the best for you. Yeah. Anyway, oh, so just go to a Russian bathhouse and they have it all set up for you and just boom, bang, I know, and, boom, and I did it. I did it when we were in, um, when we were on our trip. I jumped in that water. Yeah. I don't know why I can't do it. Because anyway. it's something about being in my own tub that I'm like, yeah. what? Why would I subject it's myself? Not a, to- you're not submerging. You have to like sit into it. It just, you have to be a real, you have to be like, like a submerge in my tub. tub. No, like, I mean like jumping into a tub versus oh. putting one foot in and another and then yeah. sinking your body you down like you can't do you gotta it. dive in and then deal with it yeah you don't have that with a bathtub it's like a slow it's one arm and then you like ho 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 <laughs> <laughs> anyway something else that's an update is that i had two occurrences where i chose not to people please and i was very impressed with myself you better work is your Ethernet cord in? Because you're going in and out on your video, but it's fine. It is in. Oh, okay. Well, there's a storm. Maybe that's it. But for, um, I had a couple folks where we kept having meetings and late night meetings um, around some work outside of work that I'm doing. And then the day that it was like time to implement what we said during the meetings, they were just like, oh, what did we say? Did we ever cover this, this and that? And so I'm like, I kept finding myself saying, hey, according to the meeting, hey, what we said in the meeting, hey, what we did it in the meeting. And finally I said, okay, and so I'm seeing a, a pattern here and I, I'm not trying to be um, combative in any way, but is everyone taking notes during these calls? And they were like, oh no, I'm not taking notes. I don't want this to feel like work. And so I was like, okay, got it. Then we have everyone needs to figure out a way to remember what we said, because it doesn't make sense to have a two hour meeting. And then we have to re- I have to regurgitate everything that we covered and agreed on and aligned on. And they were like, oh, okay, it seems like you're already taking notes. So if you wouldn't mind, can you just share the notes after every meeting? And I sat with that and I was like, hi, this is actually not how I want to show up. This is not the way that I want to show up in this space. This is not the role that I want to take on. I would like to be a creative here. And I would like for, as I, I think it's fair to ask that everyone be responsible. You. Good job. And you know Angel. what a big deal that is. Cause that's the that's role perfect. I fall in. It's like, this is what I do for work. This is what I'm good at. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I cannot, I cannot, and I will not commit to taking minutes for meetings like a secretary. I'm not going to do it. Mm-hmm. And surprisingly I was met with, Oh, completely understand that makes sense. And like, they got it right away Mm -hmm. and there was no pushback. And Mm -hmm. then even I had to push back more on some of the things that we were saying and there was no resistance and it was fine. There was no Mm -hmm. beef. And it was like, wow, I took a breath and thought, oh my God, I can disappoint people probably Mm -hmm. a little bit or be a little less agreeable Mm -hmm. in certain instances. You can be more of your actual fucking self. More honest, stop betraying Mm -hmm. myself. Then, and then I'll shut up soon. There was a, a spades night I was at. You know, I love Uh-oh. spades. Oh, shit. This was the second time of playing spades with one of these, one of the folks. And this person, the first night was very flirty, but, you know, drinks were pouring out. And he was flirty in a very, like, obnoxious way. So I just thought he wasn't on my team. He wasn't my partner so i just thought like oh he's trying to get under my skin you're not my partner we're talking shit during space we were getting our asses kicked and so i'm just like all right fine then the second time 
um, was actually at his home, same group of people, but a larger like kind of gathering and same group of people playing the game. And he started up again with this obnoxious flirting, but it got to be much more explicit to the point where, and I quote, I touched his arm to say, hey, it's your turn. I was like, hey, it's your turn. I touched his arm and he was like, ooh, your hands are so soft. Damn, if they felt like that on my arm, imagine what they would feel like on my, and then didn't finish. And so I'm sitting there and I like looked at him and was like, all right, that that's a lot. You're doing a lot now. And that's all I said. But then he continued and continued. And I stopped in the middle of the game and I looked at him in front of everyone, not, this is very public. And I said, it will never happen. And he said, yeah, that's what my baby mom said too. And then I said, imagine saying that out loud and being proud of it at 40 plus years old. And he this? I can't, I'm not going to say, but this was a real thing that happened with real other friends around. And I was happy my one friend was not there because he would have lost his mind on him. Um, but I just saw that it kept escalating and escalating and escalating. And I was in his home with, he's not my friend. I'm friends with his friends. And so it was just a situation where it felt awkward of like, okay, I, I'm, I'm giving him energy to try to be like, you need to chill, but I'm not just saying that overtly because I'm in your home, because you're not really my friend. I feel like kind of a guest here, you know, like it's, it's all that kind of dynamic. And so I was frustrated with myself because I didn't say, I didn't really check him, check him. Instead, I would like, haha, start to brush it off. But I did feel not even uncomfortable because I just, I was more annoyed. Like, this is not how men in my life interact with me. They have far more respect for me. And I was looking at my friend a little crazy, like, why haven't you checked your boy yet? Mm. Why, like, is this not obvious? Mm. And why is this funny to you that he keeps this up? You know, talking about my lips and like, just shit that's like, yo, I just felt like a piece of meat. Well, on the group chat today, when's the next game? When's the next this? And so... I was very quiet. I was just letting them talk. And then they started to bring up his behavior, not in like checking him way, but like a jokingly way. And I'm on this text with a bunch of men. And he said, well, next time something like that, um, I forget. One of my friends had suggested that we could switch partners because me and my partner were still getting our ass bust. And he was like, nah, nah, that's my partner. And so the guy who was being obnoxious said, well, you can have her, but just watch me work something around, like, I'll show you how to flirt and da 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 some shit. And so I took a moment and I didn't even like the you can have her thing. I didn't even like that. So I took a second and I said, hi, I'd like to level set really quickly. And I just proceeded to explain how I don't have, I would love to play but I'm not going to play with them or interact with them if there is not a level of respect given to me. These are my boundaries. I'm not going to be made to feel like a piece of meat. I took the quote and was like, even this is unacceptable to me. We don't know each other. This is our second time. That was our second time meeting. I understand that liquor is involved and things happen, but moving forward, this is the expectation that I have, period. And, you know, it still was, it wasn't met with like, I made it very awkward because they were, it was very joking <laughs> on the text and I killed the vibe and I knew it, what but it I was, they, he followed up with, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to make you feel like, well, one person followed up with, oh, I guess we not playing spades. We could just play Uno, something like that. Basically saying like, oh, she's not going to come, which was corny to me. Like you didn't take what I said seriously enough to just respond to that. Grow the up. other guy who said something to me at the end of the night before, you know, he had voiced like, I'm sorry, I didn't know that you didn't know him like that. I would have spoke up, whatever. He didn't say anything. And the other guy did apologize. He said, I'm sorry if I made you feel that type of way. Not my intention. I was just joking. Fine. I said, cool. All good. I just, again, wanted to level set. And I brushed it off. I was like, didn't mean to kill the vibe. Carry on. That's it. Like, carry on. I just want to level set and make it really clear. But I was really proud of myself for doing both 
because I know that I can often feel like, oh, I don't want to be that person that's super sensitive. And I know that they're just playing. And I know he wouldn't do anything. And I know this, but I don't fucking like it. So don't I, do it. I feel like, I feel like we talk about people being powerful, right? Mm-hmm. Like as, as this thing that just happens randomly, but mm-hmm. the, 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 the powerful person that you are are in this moment and that you're feeling that magic and what it feels like in your body and how it feels in you, in you, just your honesty and people are feeling that. I just feel like that is how you become a powerful person. It's not like an authority. It's not like a dictator. It's not a person that's always right. It's not a person that is, um, even handle situations in the best way. But like that kind of shit, Antoinette, is how you become a really powerful person. That's how you like keep your fucking cells Mm. vibrating at a high level. Like that is amazing. And I'm really proud of you. And you don't have to be mean when you do it. No, you don't have to. And when you do, you're accountable to it, which is also building your power. Like- the, the failure or people, even if you were having to have had a conflict and, and he was like, don't come to my house anymore. That doesn't in any way, you know, yeah, it's fine. take away from the self-esteem that you're building. Mm-hmm. Are you fucking kidding me? That's very good. Well, and it's we'll also do. very good. It's a good segue to our topic. Um, oh, I have one more thing though. Oh, okay. But you also have to give your updates. Sure. Um. I would like to say that, um, oh, we didn't even cover the Oscars. <laughs> anyway, I would really like to see the sequel to Avatar, but I feel oh like God. people you are going to judge that me. To you so. yeah. <laughs> you should have not I, said that. That no. is not a reflection of the Round the Way Curls values I or see us it as a team. So- Oh, badly. You're giving a disservice to the you BIPOC You know how I community. feel about white people saving the world, and I want to see it. There's something about it. It's great cinema. I'm watching Jack Ryan right now. Oh, my God. It is so much propaganda. This white man is running around in the Middle East saving watching young Game people. Game of Thrones again was horribly Terrible oh, optic. Yeah. Look Daenerys? At Daenerys, the conqueror. Fuck out of here with her Bring blonde hair, blue the... eye. What an eugenics, <laughs> white, Shanti, Aryan Jack nation Ryan, propaganda. Jack Ryan was in South, in Brazil. I don't know who that is. I apologize. This is a show. It, it's also a real per- It doesn't matter. He was in, this, this character was in Brazil uncovering. It's not making you powerful. A- you are ingesting lies. Listen. You are neutralizing all the work that you do. I don't want to hear in, it. It's ridiculous. He was <laughs> in Brazil, like making sure that the election um, was not basically corrupted in any kind of way when the U.S. has so much. We fuck up South American elections and put our our thumb on the scale all the time over there. Now the third season is he's doing something in Russia and they talking about Russia being in Ukraine. Not I was Russia. like, wow, it's look at it. On it. It is great. Like there's something about it for me and there's something you deeply need to tap into that. I don't, yeah. I, you need yeah. To, you need to really I don't know what it is. Maybe that. I'm looking for a savior. Oh my God. <laughs> Go by that might be it. That might be why I love Marvel. Find comfort in that the idea of this that this things can be made. I'm my fucking mom. Holy shit! Things this can is be blowing made my mind. Right I'll easily. never. She her favorite movie is The Equalizer because she feels like she Just never got a fair shake in life, and so she always says, Into "I love this shot. movie." <laughs> and listen, no, no, I swear, she always says, "I love." I'm Twenty minutes in, this is too long. She goes, "I love this movie because." I, I just wish I had an equalizer. It's I, I'm her. I'm horrified. That's good. I'm looking now for a white a, person to save me. Not a white person. I think more I think more is that you find comfort in things being like, it's done. Boom. We fixed this shit. You got a problem? I'ma come zap that shit out you. <laughs> bomb the shit out you in the name of justice and equality. Yeah. We saving the world. 
free to planet and the blue people that are wow. strangely close to the indigenous <laughs> people of the Americas that we will not I name. I want to see it. I don't accurate. care. You know who loves that movie? Me and my mom. Shout <laughs> out to your white mom. Oh, God. Anyway, what's your, your system. <laughs> what's your update? What's your update? I came across a beautiful quote by Toni Morrison. Now, speaking of therapists or therapy, we weren't, but I feel like we just had it. So I'm just going <laughs> to say that. <laughs> say what? Um, I have always wanted, I think I said on the podcast, when I think about like my perfect therapist, it's Toni Morrison. Oh, I have yeah. an affinity. Like Toni Morrison is a powerful, speaking of powerful, she's a bad Mm. bitch she has a seriousness and a self-regard that's unshakable yeah and i admire her and i'm also terrified by her in a lot of ways that i'm just realizing like i I like alice walker but if between alice walker tony morrison and she's dark like she's dark too like Mm. what what did you just write? But anyway, there's some amazing interviews with her on YouTube. She's folks. a bad bitch. Take your time and, and go down that wormhole. Put her on my altar. I don't think I have any Tori Morrison anymore, but uh, I'm going to regard her and uplift her, pour some out for her. Um, she has, in an interview she had with Oprah, I guess, it, you know, Oprah was doing her Oprah thing, and she responded to a question by saying, I know that what is alive for me, I know that. Oh, I know what is Uh-oh. alive for me, and I have a place that is mine. That's my work. When I write, that's mine. It is free. Nobody tells me what to do, and I wouldn't listen if they did. It's all mine. It's my world. I've invented it. These are my people. This is my language. And I've come to believe that everybody needs one of those places. It could be gardening. It's just a place where it's you and what you do. It can be creative. It can be a computer. It could be anything. It's your sacred place and you own it. Mm. And I've really been trying to, I think the through line in me, like going on dates with myself, me um, being completely heartbroken. I, I talked to you earlier, like me being completely heartbroken in a way of the lack of self-regard and like the lack of creating and claiming and being in practice of having a sacred space it's breaking my heart like it's Mm. literally I have just I am in shambles over here silently but in the best way possible it's not like I'm I'm cracking you open destroyed but in a way I there are parts of me that are being completely wrecked and I just aspire to and really want to find that space for myself. So I am putting myself, um, taking myself on dates. I actually have been writing more because I feel like writing is a space for me to. Um, Your morning pages or just in general? Morning pages or just, you know, I wrote a letter to a friend. I wrote an email to a friend and I was like, I love what I'm doing right now. Like, I just mm-hmm. love what I'm doing right now. And it feels really good. And it feels really natural that it's close to um, when she said, this is my language that feels mm-hmm. like, Oh, like, this is a space that I feel great in. And um, so that's my pursuit. That's my theme for 2023. And if anybody else is doing the same thing, shout out to you guys. I want to shout out Nana. Cause I saw that she is, I saw a little photo that she shared of her over a pottery wheel. Mm-hmm. And if I hope that's her space and I just see you girl and I'm, I'm proud of you. And if it's not your space, then shout out to the, she's taking a class. Finding, shout out to Nana know. from the work Bay pod. Yeah. She's taking I just a love class. that for her. And I, I love it for all, especially black women, especially moms that are just like, nah, this is, this is my shit. I don't care who sees it. I don't, I don't fucking care. This is my shit. Um, so I've been, I don't know if you guys can see, if you're on Patreon, if you're not, this sucks for you. You should become a patron. It's reasonably priced and it's really great. But my, um, I'm thinking about painting my room. 
Ooh. And so if you can see that swath in the back, I don't think it's going to work. And now I have a huge oh, that marking. Orange? It's it's not orange. It's not giving it any justice because my lighting is poor. But like that's also a space of like getting my my space together and caring for myself. And I also just have been listening to my body in a way. And I my body is on point because when before I get my period, I have a crazy craving for hamburgers. And I made myself a smash burger, like the joint that you can get at um, what's the what's the boutique burger place that everybody loves? I started in New York franchise. They have incredible branding and service. But oh, I know what you're talking about. But you also don't know the name because we are not equipped. <laughs> Our brains don't work like that in that catalog way, and we won't be shamed for it. I don't never, I've never, I think I have ate there once, sweet. Girl, anyway, it's just a bit, it's a traditional like burger burger, like fast food burger where you push it down. It's not like a big thick burger where it's rare in the middle. It's like normally not, it's cooked all the way through, medium at the most. I fucked it up. I made myself a sauce. I went on YouTube and researched how to make this fast food sauce. Shake Shack. Lettuce, tomato, Shake Shack. I got myself pickles. I got myself a bun. I got French fries. And I love that space that I created for myself. So I more of these opportunities too. of like painting my room colors that I may not actually run with and eating burgers when my body says more iron, please. Shout out to us. I love that for you. I do too. Well, um, I blab for quite a bit. So let's take a break. And when we come back, we'll get into voicemail. Does that sound good? I, I hope that this is a space where you, that you can feel like it's your own. So maybe you sing your heart out right now, Sheila, if that's what you're called to do. <laughs> get creative. I, I know y'all want me to sing. But uh, today's messages will be right back. Boop. That wasn't your heart. Your heart wasn't in that one now. Because I can write the break when you're talking. Ah, my head. These hurt. They hurt very badly. <laughs> <laughs> they hurt so bad. It's with the glasses too. It's pushing into. Oh, I hate this. We gotta get new headphones. Are you ready? What? Hold on, let me test said, this. Am I reading? <laughs> Are you ready? Are you speaking English? Oh, no, apparently I'm not, but don't be, uh, what is it, nationalist, okay? I was speaking something else. All right, ready? Mm -hmm. And we're back. So, ho, 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 let's get into my favorite parts of the week, which are the voicemails. And we only have two voicemails or three. Well, somebody called back twice. Uh, but where y'all at? Where's the voicemails for the new year? Why are you not hitting us up? New phone, who this? What's going on? Content isn't inspiring us. Do better. Maybe that's true. All right. If you are ever, when people are DMing saying they can't find the number, the voicemail number is in every description of the episode. So make sure you check that out once you listen to the episodes. You just click on the description and the voicemail number. It's the text right description. There. What? Okay. The text description. Okay. Okay. Ready, set, play. 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 Why? <laughs> it just played. Oh, God. This is not life. Hmm. One moment, please. She said, hmm. Because it's like, it's connected. I'm looking at it. This thing plays in my face. It literally says it's playing. Ready, set, go, go. What the? Okay. I can't stand it here. It just was playing. Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, and now I didn't know about the podcast for a long time. I don't know why, but I knew about y'all back in the YouTube and blogging days. Um, so I am late listening to every 
thing because I had a whole baby last year and I was tired. <laughs> My newest baby was born in October. Um, <laughs> Why would I pick the wrong voicemail after all that? Girl, <laughs> delete I think this you should tell, put it back to 28 so he knows where to edit out. Okay. Like he knows. Okay. What, okay. What to completely ignore. Oh my God. Okay. One more time. One more time. Where is this thing? Okay. Ready? Hey, Antoinette. This is Gloria calling. And I just want to say that you bamboozled me. I thought Black Panther 2 was going to be on Disney Plus this weekend, which is why I didn't get to the movies on Tuesday. But I was like, no, I'll save the money and just wait. Because patience is a virtue. And I looked, and it's not on Disney Plus. So I Googled it. It's February 1st. Oh. I am bamboozled. Not me sabotaging black people saving the world. <laughs> listen, listen. I would like to apologize. I'm going to take ownership over that. But I swear, I swear, because I, I look too. I have not seen Black Panther yet. That's embarrassing. But I haven't because I was waiting for Disney Plus. Stop. Because please. you're not interested in Black people. I am world. very interested in it. Stop it. I just, I have, I don't know how to get to the movies and have time for that. But a big part of it is, I think when Angela won that award, they pushed it back. To get more people to go to the movies to get the money, I really Not believe you that. Because I'm they swear made to God, I saw to that. February first, the first day of Black History Month, strategically. Oh, wisely, maybe they changed a long it time of that. ago. I no, changed I'm, it. Maybe I'm you had you, incorrectly. I, I saw January twentieth. <laughs> I saw it. I was super hyped because I remember thinking to myself, "I have to get to the theater to see this." And then I saw that it was going to come out. I said, "Well, I could just watch it here." But also, I would like queen, to apologize. Queen, we are unsourced, unsighted, <laughs> unverified. So please tread lightly as we are producing a team that can help us with sourced information in real no. time. This is all from the dome. Unedited. No, it's not. We majority it is. We put no. We do we research. Put things Stop. out there, and then we, <laughs> when asked where That's... we got that information from, Stop. We often. I got it from Instagram. I we swear. remembered from Instagram posts from Shade Room and no, from other people from that are inaccurate. We <laughs> stop you embarrassing me. We no. do more work than that. We I would like to apologize. We put a lot of work, but when it comes to some things, we are working on it. <laughs> some progress. We are. That is the work. Okay, ready, set, go. Hi, Shanti and Antoinette. Um, I'm a new listener and someone who's really loving the podcast just over the last couple months. Um, I've been following the Stable Collective for a long time now, many years. Um, but I'm listening to episode 231 and getting chills at the beginning because I had a similar experience as you, Shanti, um, just yesterday. Um, where I was feeling a presence in my space, in my room, um, and yeah, sleeping and, and feeling like I'm in between that sleeping and waking place and, and getting that sense of paralysis where I can't move my body, but I'm fully conscious, even, you know, my eyes are open and I feel like a presence that I can't see, um, but that is definitely on me. Um, I felt like the floorboards in my room <laughs> getting heavy. Like they didn't, I didn't hear them moving, but I felt the presence of weight on them. And I live in Philly as well, West Philly. So wood floors everywhere. Um, and you just can feel these old houses kind of move when they are moving. I felt the weight on the floorboards. Someone come up to me and I felt them like, on me like they're they're warm and um I felt them like watching me just just 
far enough behind me that um, I couldn't see them. And, of course, I couldn't turn because of the paralysis. And that happened twice um, in the same night. And so, yeah, I'm kind of freaked out listening to the podcast today, but um, just wanting to say that, I don't know, maybe a portal is open in Philly or something. I don't know, but this happened just a day before your episode released. And, um, yeah, I'm just an, I'm someone who's very into plant medicine. And so I've been thinking about, like, different ways to approach this. Saving is one, like you were saying, Chauncey, and um, I think my first instinct was to, like, look over at my ancestor altar and be like, hey, y'all, hey, <laughs> please um, be around um, in the spirit realm or whatever. Um, watching and looking and protecting and covering. And, yeah, um, I'm going to be doing some more research about some of the ways to clean my space, cleanse my space, rather, with herbs, um, herbal oils and um, essential oils um, and sprays, spraying with things like lavender. I keep lavender by my bed. Oh, she got cut off. One second. Hi, I'm calling back to finish up talking about the the ghosts, the visitors, um, and just saying that things like lavender, protective herbs, um, and and I keep my stones by the bed, but probably need to refresh a lot of these things and really just like set my intentions around them again. But I just wanted to share that that you know plant medicine and plants herbs are kind of a a way to deal with some of these spiritual um, experiences energetic experiences um and that i'm going to be revisiting all that because it's happening over here too and i wanted to say that maybe i don't know maybe this is a good topic for the podcast i would love to know how you explore it more shanti like if, what other practices come up for you or um what ways you all think about spirituality and energy and, and maybe can offer us some ways to think about when these types of things happen in general, you know, to us as black women who are very intuitive and such. Um, and, um, yeah, and, and, and you talked about being really emotional and kind of like, I guess, vulnerable at this time. So what that has to do with what you're experiencing too. And, um, yeah, just maybe it's a cool topic. Uh, to dive into a little bit more because I would like to know y'all's perspective and how you navigate this um, thing that you're experiencing. Okay. I love the podcast. Talk to y'all soon. First of all, again, the range of around the way <laughs> curls. We got supernatural. We got superficial. We got <laughs> Everything you could ever, horror, <laughs> joy, drama, shame. shame. Listen, you want it, we got it. So shout out to the community and these information, misinformation. <laughs> it's all right here, baby. <laughs> Propaganda, do <deep> conspiracy <laughs> theories. What? Um girl yeah i i believe you and that shit is real experienced this since i was little mm. listen um perhaps perhaps i can't say that i'm well versed beyond you know what um i shared on the podcast on how to deal with that and just like praying or chanting from what i was taught when i was younger but um, I do know lots of people that are deep into it, heavy into it, and could tell you all the things. But um, sometimes it's just as simple as saying, yeah, you're not wanted here. Like like Antoinette said, talking to them or listening or being open to what I'm I'm actually not ready to be mm. open to that kind of thing. But be open to what Antoinette, kind of thing? A lot of you and other people were like, well, what are they, what is being communicated? Maybe something's trying to be shared. Like don't immediately feel like you're being harmed or you're being. What if it is an know. ancestor? 
Yeah, like you know, I'm not out. I'm not built for that. That's not how I want to communicate. And I think I can have a boundary as well to say like I really don't want to be paralyzed or like see a body. And some people can say that, like come in a dream or I don't know, but I don't don't want to look over and see somebody standing there. Mm. Yeah. I, yeah. I think a through line in this is the Sable Collective. So <laughs> She says she shopped at the Sable Collective. You run the Sable Collective. I don't know what you giving out, girl. But also, if there was a portal, if the ancestors chose Philly as the place to come back. Philly is heavy with energy. Philly? I know, oh, but what God. kind of energy? Oh, the, 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 this was one of the founding States, the history here, the historical shit that's gone it's down. Founding here, really state, heavy. Founding, yeah, in the early America, a lot of shit happened here. It's not a state. I just put it. You... Pennsylvania. Well, okay. Philadelphia at that time was. was... Yeah, of course, nineteen seventy six or nineteen seventy six. Whoa! Wow. All right, we're gonna stop <laughs> trying to get deep and verify our education because nineteen seventy six. Me... But no, listen. I hear that, but God, I just feel like there's so many. Where do you think it should be then? Where do you think the portal Tulsa. should be? I don't know. When I think of that, I think somewhere down south. Like I feel like roots, roots are like there. I don't know. I I, you know what? Some, I might be, be thinking about Lovecraft and yeah. just going too far. I could be doing that. <laughs> but listen, I have never experienced that. I have experienced um, not a presence, and definitely not paralysis. I've never a presence. Never a presence. Oh, in dreams, in I felt life. like. No. But the one thing that I will say is like when I do my cards and if I it, like my angel cards or my guy cards, you've done them with me, that I truly feel that my grandmother, and she ain't black. Oh, is my she Italian grandmother. Me. I know. That's she's a big misconception. Yeah. Big she misconception. She is coming <laughs> through. In those cards, I believe it with my whole heart and soul. You were there when you and Amanda and myself pulled those cards. And those cards that y'all pulled, especially Amanda, you can't tell me somebody wasn't speaking oh, directly yeah, to her. Your cards are especially those dream cards. Yeah. Those guy cards and those angel time. cards. Like, mm -hmm. like shut up. How you know? Too. So it's, it's interesting. I don't know. I, 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 I if your I cards felt got a bunch of white women on it. White angels. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. White people saving the world. <laughs> no. That's the name of this episode. No. And continue. <laughs> Keep it moving. <laughs> I think we already have an episode called that as well. No. Part two. Good. <laughs> <laughs> they will be bad. All right. Take us into the main topic, Sheila. So... As I have been excavating uh, myself, um, I, I feel like this year, and I feel like the last year as well, has really been a space where I have been understanding what projection is. I think when we, that's a word that's been thrown out a lot, and people are like, yeah, 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 yeah I know what projection is, but I don't know how deeply we understand how projection guides and leads and um, often muddies our relationships and our views of ourselves and the views of others. So for those of you who don't have a definition of projection, I'll give you one. This is from Everyday Health. Not me citing this motherfucker. Girl. Stop playing with me. Go okay? ahead, girl. Stop Playing with the roundaway curls. Powerful. Credible motherfucking ability. You heard me? <laughs> <laughs> um, projection is a psychological projection is a defense mechanism people subconsciously employ in order to cope with difficult feelings or emotions. Psychological projection involves projecting undesirable feelings or emotions onto someone else rather than admitting to or dealing with the unwanted feelings. And so last week I projected onto Antoinette, I have been realizing in our relationship 
in in that instance, it I had a blah, 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 I had an experience and be like, damn, how long have you been projecting onto internet? Because I don't think it's a one time thing. I think it's it becomes um, we talked about in a further episode. It becomes an entanglement. Mm. It becomes a through line and a pattern in the relationship if left unchecked. And so last week, Antoinette had, and I had um, a tiff, if you will. We talked about it on the podcast. And um, to be completely honest, I don't remember the exact uh, conversation verbatim. But, you know, Antoinette was just being herself responding to um responding to an ask or responding to just like a logistical issue around timing and around creating some um allowances for me because I'm taking this class so that our schedule had to change and so in her response to it I had created in my mind this tone that she was speaking to me in this um overarching idea of how I think that she's looking at me and feels towards me and so I was projected onto her defensively in the name of me defending myself something that she hadn't even done or wasn't necessarily what she was even feeling and so internet was like, you're projecting onto me and that's fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> that I remember from verbatim. I Shanti, say that. I'm in a meeting, you're projecting onto me and that's fucked up. Did I say that? And I had to sit with it. My first response was to go even deeper into my projection. I was like, she about to curse me out. It was even deeper, but I had to sit with myself and, and I had that blue movement up come um <laughs> I say that? above i had to get, get outside of my body and really sit with what i was feeling was i feeling you know something that she was w w making me feel or was i responding to a story that i have in my head was i not really dealing with more deeper difficult feelings and emotions that Antoinette is not the source of. And I, I've been in my romantic relationship. Um, shout out to Rashid, my co-copywriter. He <laughs> was the first one to really illuminate and, and, and show in real time through our relationship, how we project onto each other. And so I feel like in our efforts to be more powerful people, in our efforts to really have relationships where vulnerability can happen, where we really have relationships of that are solid, we have to become aware of the ways in which we're projected on and the ways we project onto other people. And to think that we don't do that is mm. nonsense. But I think we have to get really clear on what it is that we're doing. And I'm going to offer some for those of you as we kind of like do a, um, an audit of our relationships and audit of ourselves, the different areas where it often comes up. Because let me tell you something. God is good. The universe wants you to grow and expand. So the people in your life where you find yourself having challenges in the the situations are going to come up and they're going to be like, this is where you're doing it. This is how you're entangled in like a pattern of projection. It's there. We just have to do the work to kind of see it, recognize it, be accountable to it. But often I think a popular projection that happens is in friendship. Um, I think this idea of people saying, I don't have friends. I don't make friends. I can't be close to friends. A lot of people, I think a lot of women make this say this common um this is common saying i don't trust women i can only be friends with m men i feel like it's a common thing that's just sh you're actually projecting this generalized 
you know, I can't disconnection with a group of women when it's really your shit. You have a, a wound that's not healed. You have, there's something else there. And I feel like when we hear that commonly, it's, no, you got some other shit that you're not really owning up to or admitting. Um, I think the dynamic with women, also this comes up, a person, I you I don't get as much um, attention than you that you do. I feel insecure when I'm with you. I can't keep up with y'all socially, economically. You kind of like putting this thing on somebody else and kind of mixing it as if they're it's their responsibility or there's some guilt that they should have or there's this. Whenever you start your language with "you make me." it's an opportunity for you to sit back and be like, hold up, is that real? Or am I projecting some deeper thing that I'm not being accountable? I'm not being honest about. I feel like romantic relationships are the perfect space to do this. It's, I think that's where it's done the most. And it's wild because you find the person that your projections just intermingle and fit like a puzzle. And then you're just in the spiral of working through like, working out this, this, whatever it is, your emotional wound stuff that you have to work out. But a lot of times assuming somebody's cheating, assuming somebody doesn't di desire you, calling somebody Fear. angry, saying this person doesn't want to be vulnerable. This person doesn't want to commit. I think these are also opportunities. So there's all these different areas um, where we project and there are many different areas of our lives. And I was just curious, Antoinette, and wanted to go into it um, with you around your awareness of projection, your awareness of when you're being projected on, you being able to acutely catch that. And we'll go into deeper into how we can become more aware and, and the source of it. But let's just start off with your relationship with projecting and being projected upon. I don't know. I mean, I think reje projection is rooted so deeply in fear. And so, and also like assumptions and shame mm -hmm. often. And so this person from work is driving me crazy. It's 11 o'clock and they're reaching out to me. Um, and so I don't know. I know I project onto people. I, I don't know if I'm aware enough to know who that is, but I'm, mm. I, there's no way. You don't know I your don't projection do. pattern. I, I think I project onto Jade a lot. Jade of all Jades. I think that I worry that I don't show up in certain ways that I used to for her and that she's going to be angry with me mm. or that I've, um, there's a lot of, Friends, even like Mandy, like she introduced me to Mandy. And so Mandy and I are hanging out a lot more. And then I get this fear in me of like, oh, Jade's going to think that, you know, mm. I'm. And so if she says anything, and my mm. projection doesn't usually come off as fear, or excuse me, excuse me, doesn't usually come off as like anger. It comes off as like overcompensating. Mm. Um, Do you and, go ahead. Do you have the original wound, if we had to? Carl Jung called the source of projection the shadow self. So when people talk about shadow work, get in touch with your shadow self, the theory is that the personal shadow are the parts of the personality personal that we push out of our awareness. We do our uttermost best to deny that they are there. We don't want to admit to them and we don't see them. But by placing it underneath a magnifying glass, we come to understand that the personal shadow is a large part of our childhood. So it's like this original oh, yeah. wound of, of what What do you think, if you the had people to just name it? Yeah, people pleasing. I think you do a mix of people pleasing. I think I do a mix of people pleasing, but then with my sister, it's, it's defense. Mm. Or like with family, it's defense. Oh. And like I'm pissed. Mm. Um, I've done less of that now, um, but 
I think it's that with my friends, it's more like I got to make sure that everything's good. But for whatever reason, maybe that's also a, a, a mix a of for childhood stuff. Yeah, it, all of it is, but it's a mix of two resentment. St- underlying mm. resentment with my family um, that I, I I always think I'm over and I, I am, but it I think the pattern is still there mm-hmm. of like, mm-hmm. this is how we deal with each other. Mm-hmm. But we've gotten a lot better with that. But I think my, my stuff is deeply rooted in that fear of not being good enough that people will stay or will want abandonment me. stuff, abandonment stuff of like worthiness. Mm-hmm. It's, I don't even think it's abandonment stuff. Honestly, if I go deeper, it's, it goes deeper into like, you'll leave because I'm not enough. So I have mm. to show you how, how much, how mm. great I am mm. or constantly prove that. Um, and if I don't, if I rock the boat or if I, this, if I, that, you know, you could possibly leave and then, you know, and that's not what I want. Um, so with, with a Jade, it's that I think I'm sure I project onto you. I don't think we I'm aware of how I do that. We have an entanglement. Do you, how do I project? On, I'm sure. Um, you I don't know. know. I've just become aware of it deep <laughs> last week. <bitch. laughs> well, I, but I I'm think sure. the more aware we are, the more we yeah. can, we can see, but somehow. I don't think I should have said you're projecting onto me that, and that's fucked up. We were angry in the moment, both of us. But I do think that it's healthy to say I I I'm I hear what you're saying. I'm I've I don't know if it's I feel. I think I I think I feel is okay. I heard you say that, but I feel this. Feel there is might fine, be, but you make me. Yeah, when I, you say you I make feel me. this might. Okay, I hear you. I, I feel this might be. There might be some projection in this, and I can check myself and take a beat. And I think that would be helpful because I truly don't know how I, I think I project my fears onto you when it comes to failing with the podcast. For sure. So the stakes are high. That is where our stuff, (laughs) that is where the pattern begins and and tempts us to act out in ways. My fear of failure. Your fear of failure coincides with my underlying idea that things don't work out so why 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 Jeez. and you sense that like yo this shit might not work out and i'm like so we gotta go harder and you're like so we, gotta we gotta go gotta harder it, it coincides i think my childhood wound is not being nurtured and cared for in a particular way mm-hmm. and having to not people not really checking in on me i think i'm independent and I've had to be independent from a very young age. And so I don't always express if something's going on. So I'll take on more work. I'll take on, I'll have so many things going on that I don't have the capacity to even manage what to speak of like emotionally express. And it just, it just becomes a space where like, I, I think I'm okay. People might not be checking in on me. I'm independent, but it's also like, it's, things aren't okay. I'm not well. And I can't ask for the help because I don't, I'm not used to being nurtured. I'm not used to somebody seeing me and being like, yo, what's going on? I'm not used to, um, that particular kind of care. It's just, it's even, it feels uncomfortable Something. to me. And then I have this underlying family trauma of like, yeah, shit just doesn't work out. And also I haven't been nurtured for a, a, a level of excellence and a level of worthiness that I mm. think, or or um, not worthiness, that's not the word. It is rooted in worthiness, but it's just like, there's not um, a level of like, you can get an A because you're brilliant. Let me help you do that. Let me walk your hand through it. Even if you're scared, or even if you don't think you have it, let me be there to root you on. I just, I didn't have it. So when those things where you're like, Shanti, we could do this. You're amazing. Also, if this fail, also the pressure of you like being like, and we have to do it right because it has to be this thing 
coincide with my it like. If it's not right. Why do it if it's not going to be quote unquote right or your best? Not right. Why even do it? That that sounds good in theory, but you also have this other fear and energy. Like that sounds good, but mm -hmm. there's also this other underlying oh, yeah, thing that I don't know in the fear. Yeah, oh. the true. I think I just had a moment where I realized, like, oh, it's not just fear; it's security. All of this is security. It's security in my relationships that people yeah. are going to leave, mm. or that they, mm. or security mm -hmm. that I feel like I'm that they value me, or that they mm. see me, or that mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. want me. It's security mm -hmm. in being okay. It's yeah. like, and I, I feel like some of that security wasn't felt even though I had the two family household emotionally, I wasn't secure mm -hmm. in a lot mm -hmm. of ways when it mm -hmm. came to parenting, when it came to sexual violence and abuse, mm -hmm. it just, it didn't. And then when my family ended up separating, there was no security really. It didn't, it didn't feel like that. And the security yeah. I had, I learned years later, it blew up to like, Oh, this, this person who made me feel so secure and protected me was actually yeah. incredibly flawed yeah. and, and no longer shows up for me in that way. Mm. And so it's like, Oh shit. I have to take care. You also have a, but I have to take care of myself. I have mm -hmm. to keep things together. I don't I have, have I don't I have a partner. Some people. I don't and also, have, yeah, people no. close to me, I'm going to show up and do the best for and sometimes feel resentful about it as well. Don't Child, you? it's interesting. It's wild. I want to say to for your projection, though, if I if I may, I think part of it, too, for you, uh, uh, something that is rude, that it can be rooted in is your fear of not knowing. I feel like when there's things that you don't know, you'd rather have someone tell you than seek the information out. It's almost as if you might feel like you're going to get lost finding. No, it's in my relationship with you. Unfortunately, oh. it's my relationship with you of feeling like she's going to get mad that I don't know. She's going to accuse me of not looking when in fact, I don't have the capacity sometimes to actually research stuff. Like I, do, I don't have the space and then this shit comes up and she's like, you didn't look. And it's not because I'm scared to look because I, I've been looking and doing shit my, by myself forever, forever. So it's not, it's not that it's my relationship with you rather than being like, yeah, I didn't have the opportunity to look at it or, or I don't know. There's it's, I'm still unraveling it. Cause there's also like an assumption assertion thing as well asserting myself your bigger energy than i have it's easier just to be like uh so it's i think we and i'll get into this i think the only way that we untangle ourselves is similar to what you were talking about earlier is rising to the occasion when these moments come when these mm -hmm. moments of honesty come when these moments of hurt come when these moments of fear come, I'm feeling insecure, you're making, da, 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 you know, all these things. So, and how do we know we're projecting? Conscious Loving talks about it. And they say the moments where you can sense that is if you're withdrawing or you're withholding, if you're not sharing the microscopic truth within that moment that it's available to you, and you're not allowing these moments of vulnerability to be released and revealed to this other person in the name of defense or in the name of, um, yeah, mostly in the name of defense. There's something at stake that you don't want to offer up because you're scared the person isn't going to take it. They're going to abandon you. They're going to yell at yeah. you. They're going to shame you, whatever. Um, and so she offers that in those distinct moments. There was a way that I could have, there were moments before that text that I could have talked to you that I didn't. Mm -hmm. That what it ended up happening was that it was building up. And you've said it before, it's like you're building up, you're holding stuff, Shanti, and then you, un you release it in the most random or moments that don't call for that kind of energy. And I know that I, 
I know that that happens because the microscopic moments, I'm like, oh, let it pass or, oh, I'm not going to say it or I'm scared to say it or there's shame around it or, or whatever, um, whatever issues. And I think the most important thing that I've been dealing with that has been breaking my heart is the, um, the story that I have in my head about myself that then affects my relate that I project onto other people has been the hardest thing to recognize and become aware of because again, nobody can make you feel anything. Like, of course there's abusive relationships and I, I wanna make space for that. There are some people that are harming you. There are people that have abused you in the past. There are people that have very consciously created these wounds. But at the same time, it has to be held at the same time that people can't make you be defeated or can't make you hate your body or think negative thoughts about yourself. And there I is. I agree with that, but I, I hear you. I just you, don't. Agree. Somebody can make you feel. I mean, there's abuse and they there's somebody have, saying, like, girl, you're ugly versus absolutely- you're with somebody that is just minding their business and getting attention. And then you're like, I'm ugly. I'm not attractive. I'm not worthy. It's not, no, no. I'm, I'm not. It's not that. I think that there's a lot of, there are so many um, influences out here that can absolutely warp your sense of self-worth, your sense of reality, your your being. And I think there's a lot more abusive relationships that we're in than we realize. I think that you have an abusive relationship that you've had for a long time that you, um, and I hope you know who I'm talking about, but it's abuse. And I think- Absolutely. It, and I yeah. had to realize that, that that's that yeah. person, proje- but they, they're projecting their stuff onto me. And it's still abusive towards you. And it still, I'm sure has serious effects on you so no can somebody just flat out make you anything Mm -mm. not not maybe not an adult but there's so much unlearning and undoing that you have to do yeah if you're as an adult Mm -hmm. especially when you grow up in Mm -hmm. in an environment where you are fed certain lies where you are being abused where you are being neglected where you are being harmed that has an effect I know I'm saying that, but you have, know awareness has to come like there there's that. And that's a process that can take years. This is take this is a two we, year course that we, I've been on and unraveling and realizing that. I think we're really privileged for having the space to to dedicate ourselves to that awareness. I don't know if you talk about capacity I, and I just and I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just putting it out there that. There's some people who don't even have the space to do this kind of work because they're seriously trying to fucking survive. To to be aware of their thoughts, to be aware of the to the, even be aware that the they're in, in that their they're, body that, and the to lies. even be aware that there's abuse around them. It's so normalized. Of course, yes. Of That's course. all I'm saying. But I'm there are arguing. people that are that there are people. I I think the growth. I don't know how growth or change happens unless that awareness. Yeah. And I'm just saying having having the space to do that work is a privilege. It's not a reality for everybody. I don't know. I feel like a privilege is something that is, I I feel like it's just an awareness. It's an opportunity to hear something or to notice something. I don't know if, if, Privilege feels like that's in a construct of some people have it, some people don't, and there's like a no. It's a privilege to have the space to do it, to do the work. But I think I think you can be an abuse. I think oftentimes when you're in the most difficult and abusive situations is when it becomes the most. You become most starkly aware of it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what we're arguing about. I don't know what your point is. I don't know what your point is. I. I, yes, I guess it's a privilege, but I don't know if it's, it just has to do with people's level of self-awareness. And that is, that is a spiritual um, phenomenon and occurrence that I have no, I don't know why some people 
catch it really early and why some people live their entire lives unaware. I don't know. I don't know. Shout out to shout out to the awareness and, and the possibilities of uh yeah, of people being activated and ignited in that way. But again, for me, it has to be in you really um, taking ownership in a particular way um, in order for those patterns to stop, in order for you to kind of recon reconcile with yourself and, and be kinder to yourself. You kind of have to make space for that shadow self. And I don't know if it's um, making even more judgments of being even more of a cycle of like, oh, I'm a bad person because I'm projecting onto this person and how do I get out of it? I think, I think there's moments where it gets really, really thick as you're becoming more aware, as you're working to unravel those relationships that are in those patterns. I think it gets really, I think it can get really messy in having the capacity to hold space for that mess for that shadow part that's unaware and in cycles and that other part that's like slowly becoming more and more enlightened actualized for lack of a better word and it's it's a slow process and it's not easy and it doesn't have happen overnight and um i just i guess this podcast this episode is just for people to be to become more aware of it. And the more aware that we are, the more that we can see um, the opportunities for change, the opportunities to be more honest and to disrupt those patterns. And it's, again, it's messy. When we were on the phone, I was like, girl, I can't guarantee this will never happen again. This, it's part, people are in relationships for years and the shit comes up. But if there's awareness there, I feel like there's always possibility for, you know, for it to change. But Bell Hook said this about positive thinking. Positive thinking is such a um, cliche to me. And I have, I think I'm so unwell that I'm like, that's corny. But she says, because we have believe, because we have believed negativity is more realistic, it appears more real than any positive voice. Once we begin to replace negative thinking with positive thinking, it becomes utterly clear that far from being unrealistic, negative thinking is absolutely disenabling. disenabling. When we are positive, we not only accept and affirm ourselves, we are able to affirm and accept others. So shout out to having healthy relationships with dual realities, because I think that's what you're managing two people having different perceptions and trying to come together and work things out and see each other and be a loving and compassionate mirror for the other person. And um, yeah, onwards and upwards. If you, wanna, if you want more resources for projection and things of that nature, especially if you find you're in a pattern, or relationship with that pattern conscious loving is the jam we've talked about it before it is a masterpiece and i highly recommend it and i do not have the author's name god damn um, gay gay and katherine hendrix or something like that mm. i know that i know the husband's name is gay because i'm not well and i'm in fifth grade you just I talked about positive thoughts and you're all you say i'm not well i'm not girl. exactly i have a lot it takes it takes years it could be this <laughs> lifetime and i don't get out of it and i'm gonna love myself and accept myself and give myself space in this journey because this shit is it ain't overnight by any means gay hendrix and kathleen hendrix shout out to the hendrix they are a happy white couple that i hope are having wonderful sex together white because. people saving the world yet again Listen, I, you it might, it. that might have to be the title because gay and Catherine. you don't want it go. i wrote project uh, it's either white people saving the world or you're projecting onto me and that's fucked up <laughs> you pick you're projecting shotty i'm in a meeting i don't have time for this i didn't Do write that me. i just reread <laughs> <laughs> see the emphasis on the f word that wasn't it Anyway, no, this is good. I'll be more mindful. I, I I read the how you project, and it's um 
you know, it says one of the ways is that you judge, you judge, you judge. And I was like, oh yeah, judge and jury, baby, right here. But, because that's, but that's your narrative with yourself. I think that I don't, and maybe that didn't yeah. come through, but like, it's how you talk to yourself. Yes. Your own, Shame. It's all about you. It's lonely out here. That's also breaking my heart. There's something. Shanti, say no, some positive true. before the end no, of the No, it's not. It's a reality and it's okay. But there's something you cannot escape your responsibility for your development. You can't. No, you can't. And that's lonely. You come in this world with your psyche and with your life and you have all these experiences and all these people, but you are, you are responsible for yeah. yourself in a way that is undeniable will smith says it all the time unescapable you cannot you're, escape yourself your what you went through is not it's not your fault but it's damn sure your responsibility to undo that shit is annoying Corny, it's boo. breaking my heart <laughs> breaking my heart that's the end song all right that's a great episode um it is 11 o'clock and i need to go move my car so Pip, pip, cheerio. I don't know why I keep saying that, but this was another episode of Around the Way Curls. Um, Join us again next week for more inspiring, more inspiring topics. <laughs> we're, we'll find a light one. Good topics for so we'll, Around we'll, the Way Curls. We're going to find a, on, a light man. one for next week. We got to do something. I, I don't know. I'm not a light this person. Was heavy? I'm an intense person. I saw no, me. Well, I mean, I'm going through some things over here. I don't have nothing to talk about. I got some shit happening, okay? So maybe I do need something like. I don't know. I saw something that said um, how it was a meme. Damn. It said something Damn. like people always want to know why why I'm intense or something like that. And it's, that's because I am. Because it's so. real out here. <laughs> oh, God. That's yeah. why. Meanwhile, we think we're intense. We're clowns. That's what that person who who wrote that God did. That review is driving me crazy. I don't know why. I hate it. It's pulled up right on my computer. Good but annoying is the name of it. Shout out to you. Whoever the fuck you are, you're projecting onto us. Maybe you're good but annoying. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, maybe true. that person that person definitely is projecting. They value in having a certain type of credibility. Do you put Whoa. your identity credibility? Are you centered on being right and somebody having to prove that and validate you in some kind of way? <laughs> also, having having our shit together is important. Or is that the well, fear talk? My mind doesn't I don't work know. like that. I apologize. We're in mid conversation. We're referencing. No, it's not mid conversation, Shani. Shanti's browser is presenting recording. All right, that's the end of this episode. And with that, we are out. What does that mean? It said what she.